The biggest earthquake ever to hit the lower 48 states was not the 6.7 Northridge quake in 1994 or the 6.9 Loma Prieta quake in 1989 or even the 7.8 San Francisco quake of 1906. But the series of three quakes which struck near St. Louis in 1811 and 1812. The earth didn't just shake, it discharged bizarre sand geysers, spewed strange vapors, made the Mississippi River run backwards, and sucked lakes dry. All of a sudden, the hand of God comes down and strikes right where you're at. For many, it seemed to be the end of the world. These people were scared to death. But it wasn't over. Thousands of aftershocks rattled the continent for five more months. They rang church bells in Boston. They rattled China in New York. They were felt in Detroit. They were felt in Washington, D.C. What if that same earthquake were to strike the Midwest today? The lives of at least 11 million Americans would be in peril. The problem today is that what was an unpopulated part of America is now very populated. It's happened before. It will happen again. The heartland of America has seen its share of natural disasters. Killer tornadoes that have destroyed buildings and floods that have swept away entire towns. But an even greater danger may lurk beneath the fertile fields. A massive earthquake. Memphis, Tennessee sits 50 miles south of one of the most dangerous earthquake faults in America. Experts believe that when it ruptures, violent seismic motions will destroy bridges and highways throughout the Midwest. A major quake in the New Madrid zone would create unimaginable havoc in Memphis, Tennessee, which is the closest city to the New Madrid fault and built largely of brick. The shock will spread out at 7,000 miles per hour. The quake will critically damage an eight-state region, extending all the way to the East Coast. I think the first reaction to an earthquake, even if you're a seismologist today, is this fundamental sense of terror. It just, out of a clear blue sky, it's like somebody's picking up your house and shaking it back and forth. The earthquake will be accompanied by a series of frightening otherworldly events. 100-foot geysers of sand will erupt. Clouds of sulfur will choke the atmosphere. And the raging Mississippi River will be temporarily dammed and flow backwards. Major shaking will bring down structures in an area extending over a million square miles. It's just unfathomable that you would have buildings over 300, 350 miles away that would be damaged by an earthquake. This may seem like science fiction, but it's happened before. One of America's worst earthquakes occurred 200 years ago in the heart of the country. The mother of all earthquakes in the United States was in 1811 and 1812 in an obscure place in southern Missouri where Missouri, Kentucky, Arkansas and Illinois all meet called New Madrid. December 1811. The weather was warmer than usual in New Madrid, Missouri. There were about five or six hundred people living in New Madrid. It was a thriving river city. It was located on the largest S-curve in that section of the river. A little after two in the morning on December 16th, the earth sort of came unglued with the first of the earthquakes. There was a great 
roar that's compared in the accounts to thunder or heavy artillery and the ground started shaking and people thrown from their beds, furniture was overturned and in the middle of the night in 1811 you would have no idea what this was. Intense seismic waves radiated in all directions for hundreds of miles. The thing about New Madrid is that it's in the middle of a vast alluvial plain and the seismic shocks from it spread unrestricted across certainly Eastern America. The quake was felt as far away as New York, Boston, Montreal and Charleston, South Carolina.